Um, I'm currently working on a project and both sides of this meetup today uh, talk about that product, project. But to give you a little background, uh, this morning we talked about, um, and, and actually it's really tied to this event, um, about 15 or 16 months ago, there was someone that kept coming to my meetup and uh, to our meetup and asking me um, for help on his website. And, um, you know, he would, he, he would reach out to me on the, and the messaging and he would text me and he emailed me and he was really eager about it. And now um, in the time since I saw this presentation at a WordCamp uh, by Nathan Ingram and he was talking about how to onboard clients or finding that right client. And he was saying, stay away from the clients that rip on their former uh, developer or designer um, during their conversation with you. And this gentleman was saying how bad his former designer was and he only he wants these simple things and he described them and they sound really simple to me so I said I can help you out and um, little did I know I should have listened to Nathan um, I built this site uh, using Elementor form he was in WP Bakery formerly which is a, a legacy uh, page builder uh, style uh, theme it's still around but it's not something that I would really recommend on anyone or a wish on anyone um, and so I said, to do what you want to do, I would recommend this, this, and this. Um, what I'm going to do is build this site, and we'll have some onboarding where I, where I show you how to update the areas you described you want it changed. And so I went through the process, built the site, did the uh, demo, and no less than three days after that, I got an emergency call, a panic call saying, Joe, the site's broken. I don't know what happened. Um, it, it just, it, there's something wrong with it. Can you fix it? And so I went in and took a look at it and there was all this uh, garbly gook at the top of the page. And one thing that sort of broke my confidence in this relationship was he had in fact gone in and because I went in and looked at the revisions and I saw his name under the login, which I guess he didn't realize uh, was the case. But that led me to today's uh, discussion because um, a lot of times we build something, we build something awesome, but with a page builder, you're actually turning over the control of everything. They have the ability to make massive changes and even break the site um, by fiddling around. I, this client project that I'm going to show you today, um, one of during one of the meetings, I asked a question to um, one of the one of the team and she said hold on let me share my screen and when she popped up her screen i saw a code pin in the background and i said this is an art project manager <laughs> and she's in our former system um it was a django python thing and they've been able to just do whatever they want on the back end and it's created sort of a monster of a site that's sinking and so with that in mind i was like i need to lock this down and so earlier today we talked about how to lock down uh, the client experience um, but I really wanted to um, show that with Elementor, um, some of the learning that I had, I had done previously, um, I did a few LinkedIn learning classes and did a whole bunch of YouTube videos. And the traditional way to work with ACF is you'll have a traditional theme and, you, and for those that are developers and those that jumped on, um, I hate to tell you as a developer, Elementor sort of eliminates the need to do a lot of development with ACF because previously you would need to know how to do some PHP uh, modifications to your theme to tie in uh, ACF um, that way. But what, what I'm gonna show you today is how Elementor, and one of the things I really appreciate Ele about Elementor is when I got into um, the digital field a long, long, long time ago, too, too far back to really even um, discuss without embarrassment is uh, when I learned about when the Macs came on the scene my last year in college, um, it was a, an epiphany. I didn't have to do, you know, use an Exacto or Rapidograph pen or use rubber cement anymore. My hands, you know, back then, uh, I had, my hands are unsteady. So I was like, how am I going to become a graphic designer where I have to pull these perfect one point rules or half point rules with a Rapidograph pen? And then the Mac came along and all this PageMaker and Quark Express and how it's uh, evolved into today. I was like, I need tools that make it easy for me to do difficult things. So the one of the things that I really appreciate about Elementor and it was mentioned during some of the in introductions is they iterate on this project so much. Um, they're always adding great features and they're tying in advanced features to a lot of the things that they add. So um, you can integrate um, like if, if, for instance, if you use ActiveCampaign or 
uh, something like that, you could just plug in your API and then your forms are automatically tied in and it's easy to just do a drag and drop form and connect it like that. So the great thing about Elementor is that they do make all those difficult connections and open the way for you to be creative easy or easily. So that's part of the reason why I wanted to do this today. And actually, it's also, I'm not a developer level person, but I think I did something that was pretty cool and I wanted to share it. And also, I wanted to hear from you to see if I'm doing something wrong or if I did uh, something that we could all learn from or, or use as a discussion uh, topic to, to jump off on. So um, with uh, our welcome again to Elementor Santa Cruz Valley. Um, our meetings are generally one to two hours. Um, we're going to keep it friendly again. We're, we're not trying to shout someone down or try to prove how smart we are. We're just really here to learn. Um, please mute your mic if you're not speaking. But again, it's open. Feel free to unmute and jump in anytime you need to. Um, and the meeting is going to be recorded. So um, I just needed to let you know that up front. We did our introduction. So again, it's great to meet everyone. We learned a little bit about your Elementor story. My Elementor story um, goes back to WordCamp US uh, when they had an in-person event. It was in Nashville. And I walked into the sponsor area, every WordCamp. And for those that don't know, a WordCamp is a meetup on steroids. So imagine this topic multiplied by 36 or 24 speakers over a weekend. And it's um, in the virtual space, work camps are free. So um, I'm going to show you later some uh, events that are coming up. But if you want to learn, it's a great place to learn about SEO, like anything and everything WordPress, they do it over through. And it's usually people that build the tools or a lot of leaders in um, those. So theme builders, plugin builders, great speakers on these topics come in and they share with the community and you have an opportunity to learn um, anything and everything about WordPress. So it's great. So I walked into the sponsor area and there was an incredibly huge um, presentation in the back. And I went over and it was the Elementor team. So Ben, you know, Ben Pines, you know, the part, you know, all the folks you see in the videos where they're the president of the company. And I just walked up and, you know, I'm Mr. Excited about WordPress. And I was like, I, I'm, I'm comparing all three page builders right now for the office. We're trying to decide on one and Elementor is such a great product. I'm so excited. Da, da, da. And they're like, you know, we're thinking about starting a, a, a Elementor meetups in the States. And are you interested in becoming a, um, one of those leaders. And I was like, of course. And so I started one, even though I already had a WordPress meetup, but I was so excited about the interface and how it, it's very similar to how you work in Adobe um, with the toolbars and things like that. And it was very minimal. I was like, this is a, and, and the tool is always updating and, inter, and, and, and iterating. Um, I was like, I want to learn about this tool. So from that point to the next year, I compared the three builders and I've sort of settled on Elementor. And uh, over this year, past year, we've done a lot in terms of learning. So that's my story. Um, and I always want to see it, how I can apply um, those same principles of making it easy, um, easy for the user on the back end or the customer, but also from a, a user standpoint for the admins and people that are going to be using it on the back end. So today is sort of um, an exercise in whether I was successful at it. And uh, we're going to take a look at um, Elementor and ACF and how it was really simple to tie it in and sort of uh, finish up this project that I'm working on currently. Uh, we're also going to talk about um, what's coming up later uh, for our meetup as well as uh, answer, you know, open it up. And if you have questions or comments, we can get in and have discussion on that. All right. Um, I generally go through a few slides that uh, will give you resources or uh, something you can check in and learn about the latest on Elementor. Their blog is great. Um, it, it always talks about very specific topics, their releases, uh, particular um, uh, new features and how to use them. There's, they have a great uh, video library on YouTube that has over a couple hundred videos. And the thing I like about their video channel is they have playlists that are curated. So they have one that, you know, they have, and one thing I've, I hate about YouTube is they have some videos that are just music and you just watch somebody do it. And they call those speed videos. So they just go through a topic really fast without any um, assistance. Then they have a master class where they break it down um, a bullet point by bullet point. So they have a wide range of videos by all of the, the uh, leaders in their group. And it's a great resource. So I would say check out the blog. Um, again, there's a, a community of elementary meters, meetups all over the world. And the great thing about being virtual is that um, you could just pop in if you're willing to get up early in the morning or stay up late. Um, there's a lot of great people doing great topics. And again, like Sharon's uh, mentioned earlier, Dallas is a great resource. Um, there are a couple up and down the West Coast. Vegas has got a great meetup. 
um, through the South, there's a whole bunch of great ones too. So I would suggest clicking on that link and uh, joining in the community. Uh, on the back end also, if you have Pro installed, um, they pop in their news and events in the dashboard. So um, there's some great resources. For example, the project I'm, uh, one of the projects I'm working on right now, our project manager is big into material design and Elementor wrote a story about how Elementor can easily allow you to achieve your material design um, uh, project goals. So that's great also. Uh, it also talks about all the um, new features that are coming out as well as a lot of how to. So if you're really willing to learn or you're really wanting to learn and you have pro, um, that feature in your uh, dashboard is great as well. Um, and again, that's sort of a zoom in on that, that uh, particular section. All right, so for the presentation today, um, I gave you my horror story and one of the reasons why I wanted to use ACF. And again, this morning we talked about how you customize um, the uh, user experience for the client. So ACF is great because you can um, lock down certain areas. For this project, we're uh, working on an update for our Metro Art site. And um, I looked at the pages and I saw there are certain fields that are on most every page. It's sort of a catalog of all of our art that's in the system and it's sort of a living uh, catalog. And so I built the specific fields for that. But what I wanted to show you today is um, how do you connect ACF to Elementor? So before I jump in, are there any questions so far on any of the information? All right. All right. So we're going to talk about ACF and Elementor. And again, uh, the screenshot that you see here is sort of a behind the scenes of what I was working with as well as um, the screen for ACF. Um, but we're gonna get into how you make those connections today. All right, um, for those that don't know, ACF was created by uh, Elliot Condon. He's down in Australia. It's one of the most popular plugins. Like most people that uh, get into the WordPress space know what ACF is and either you've made an attempt to learn it or you wanna learn it. It's something that sort of everyone knows about but uh, very few people uh, know. Uh, last fall, uh, we were on a project, Ron and I, uh, with someone that was on our team who was a developer, and she said we should use ACF um, as part of the client package so that the client will only need to upload a few images or edit these few text boxes and then it'll update uh, in the theme automatically. So she did it the traditional way. She worked with uh, a Generate Press theme and did the back end work to connect ACF, but I was like, I've tried on a number of occasions through lynda.com and YouTube videos to learn it on my own, but I'm just not a developer. I was able to follow a tutorial, but then every tutorial lacks because they're missing one thing you wanna do. And then once you try to figure out how to do that one thing that's out of the tutorial, you screw things up. So I was like, I need a simpler solution. So um, over the past year, I saw that ACF had it, uh, uh, an integration with Elementor that was seamless and uh, through the channel, I looked at a few videos and WP Toots is, uh, has a great ACF uh, series with Elementor and I went through and I did a, um, I'm applying it to a, a current project. So I'm gonna get in and show you what I'm doing there and show you how to make those connections. All right, let me jump out of these slides. And then again, we'll come back and look at the last few slides, but um, let me show you. So to give you an idea and actually, uh, me pull this down. All right, so can everyone see the screen? There's a yellow band at the top of a web page. Uh, yeah, so uh, I'm, I'm with the government agency, a transit agency here in Los Angeles. We're the, the third largest in the country, one of the largest transit agencies in the world. And part of the construction budget, like the funny thing about LA is that way back in the 30s, uh, the 40s and 50s, um, we had a great rail system uh, but once the uh, advent of the automobile came around, um, you know, they made deals with uh, the auto industry, built freeways, and now LA is totally freeway based. And now we're trying to add um, rail back into the system because now there's nowhere to drive traffic jams, et cetera, et cetera. So part of this um, process of rebuilding the infrastructure is um, there's a small percentage of each budget, I think it's 1% of the construction budget that's dedicated to art. So if you visit any of the stations or you ride on the buses, you'll see art um, in and about uh, the system, but it's an extensive collection. Uh, this part of our website is the biggest part of the site. We call this the lifeboat because it's sinking and we're in the process of moving this to WordPress. Um, 
So our art information consists of about 1200 pages about projects, artists, et cetera. And it's something that less than uh, one hundredth of a percent of our audience looks at. So it's just a big old barge on the on the ocean of word on the ocean of the, the internet. And so part one, my challenge was I was assigned this project to move it into its own lifeboat in WordPress and uh, improve uh, the the process. You know, slim down the number of pages, control, and we created a, an interface where the uh, editorial team just focuses on adding information. And then we also put, we can put limits on the text field. We want to want to get them in the habit of writing for the web. So with ACF, we are able to control that. But what I'm going to show you today is a little bit about how we did the connection in, in Elementor. But I'm going to show you quickly uh, what the site's about. Um, again, these uh, tabs here have the uh, current information uh, about uh, our project. It's more, um, we do performances in some of the stations. So there's a performing art aspect to this program as well. But on the right, you see there's a number of different um, art projects by location in the system. So on our rail lines, on buses, we also have them in our in certain buildings in our system, uh, like Union Station, if you're in the plaza, uh, the bus plaza, the entire plaza is an actual living art piece of art. Um, so each artist is also listed. So this is a catalog that's really extensive. So just the projects alone is about 300, uh, it's 300 separate uh, projects. And what I did, I went in and I looked at each of these um, uh, project uh, detail pages and I saw what was common. So, you know, we have this, a title that's consistent. We have a, a, a photo gallery on each page. Uh, we have these three basic sections, a project description, artist statement, and about the artist. Uh, information on every page as well as where it's displayed, what station it's displayed in, and art in, artist information like sometimes their image. We have an, uh, an interview uh, that was done in SoundCloud. Um, and, and in the future, it's going to be um, a podcast. Uh, YouTube videos are sometime on this page. So my task was to create a new system that will allow them to drop in these elements and have these pages generated dynamically. So what I did on the back end, and again, I'll, I'll quickly show you how this maps into our current uh, ACF connection. And again, I apologize for the, the people that saw this earlier. Um, but um, so for instance, um, there's a, a project description section. There's a project description section on the page. So what we're doing too is we created a real simple process where they can just copy and paste from the browser or they can enter information on their own. As long as it's consistent, it's going to show in a, in a defined area. There's also an area, and again, these are ACF fields. Uh, this is another WYSIWYG box for the artist statement. And as you move down the page, you see there's an artist statement. Uh, you work on, you work down further. Uh, there's an about the artist section, uh, which also maps to this. And again, every project has uh, this basic information as well as the display air, uh, display year. So. Again, as you work down the page, you see all these fields that I created to control that process. Um, so that's just the ACF portion. And also I'll quickly show you, um, again, I just created one simple field group. And again, for those that are experienced, you know, you may use uh, different uh, field groups for different uh, layouts or different um, sections. So, but for this project, I wanted to do something really simple and we can eventually add more on, but again, uh, this is a field uh, group. And I think the field group that I use could be done in, in the regular version of ACF, but I take that back. Um, there's a couple of fields like for a YouTube video. So I use O embed and I think that is a pro feature, but um, yeah. So again, these are the fields that we see on the, um, on the new information when it's being added in the, the WordPress CMS. Um, so all of these fields were built um, using a field group. And the question is how do we tie that into um, Elementor. Um, I used Elementor Pro, um, and and I think that's a requirement for um, for using this. Um, so yeah, so let's go ahead and take a look. Um, also, just to give you an idea of what's on the back end, let's just quickly look in the appearance section. And as I go, jump in if there are any questions. So on the back end, um, the theme that I'm using is um, and again, uh, Jetpack is annoying with the prompts. Um, Oh, let me show you one other thing before we jump on. Uh, one of the reasons why I used Elementor also was uh, with our art team, uh, 
they're very particular about what they wanted to see. And it's really hard for them to make a decision because it has to go up through 15 different people. So uh, we provided them with a whole bunch of theme options that range from magazine style to uh, portfolio style to um, basic blogging style themes. And they chose something that was very minimal, very museum-like, and they settled on this theme, which was, um, it's a news theme uh, or magazine style theme uh, from Zuki. These folks are in, I think, the Netherlands. But again, it offered a lot of visual variety as you move down the page. So the other cool thing was that each component as you move down the page, like this slider, um, these stories and latest highlights are tied to tags. So anything that's tagged with latest highlights will show in this quadrant of four under creative. And this again is a different layout, but it's the same premise. If it's tagged with another tag, it appears here. Um, it had a quote what they liked because you know artists are always full of quotes and profound things that they want to tell you. Uh, it also has connections with social media, email tie-ins. Um, and then again, the great thing is again, these are all tagged in and they, uh, they um, fill in certain areas of the page. And I was thinking this, is, this can be done in Elementor, um, but with Elementor, it will off offer me the ability to offer them uh, some features that you would have to do with plugins or buy premium plugins to do some of uh, the things. Uh, a lot of times themes recommend plugins that work with them. So for instance, for their plugin, they wanted you to use this or they want you to use Jetpack for the form. So um, I wanted to sort of keep that slim. And if you've seen my plugin presentations, um, I try not to go over 20 plugins because that could start impacting uh, performance. It could also uh, create update issues that could cause security holes. So I try to keep it simple. So by using Elementor, and again, I mentioned at the top, Elementor can tie in with form uh, plugins with APIs. It can tie in with, um, with ACF easily, uh, with well, Font Awesome. There's a whole bunch of things that um, you don't have to use plugins for, which is great. Um, and again, that's part of their strategy of sort of tying a lot of that stuff in. It's sort of an all-in-one, uh, all in one uh, page builder. All right, so again, so this is what they decided on something simple. And so me behind the scenes, I was like, I take this as a challenge. I'm gonna reproduce this in Elementor, but also tie it in with ACF because um, I wanna leverage the tags and, and populating uh, the homepage to really take, um, take control out of the end users hands. I didn't want them fiddling around editing the homepage directly. Um, I wanted them just to, focus on putting content uh, in that uh, custom post type and having that populate uh, page design. So, um, so this is what I started with. Again, it was a very simple uh, layout. And so again, um, I'm gonna show you how, once I've mapped it, it's gonna uh, show here. Um, all right, so on the back end, um, I used Hello as the theme. Uh, I also downloaded the Hello Child theme uh, for those that uh, may not know um, uh, on the there's a, a GitHub site uh, for the Hello uh, Elementor Child theme, which I installed here, and I always customize uh, my screenshot as well and and put a little information in in case someone works on it after me uh, in the description area. So I did that, um, and again as a reference, I had the um, Zuki theme. I'm probably going to delete that once we launch. And I had the child theme that I built in there. So I was always bouncing back and forth so I can look at the features of the theme and apply those and, and, and move those over. And the great thing about Hello, which is a lot different from how themes work traditionally in the repository. And I mentioned this in my earlier um, session, themes are very opinionated. Um, there's, you know, people tell, there's categories that themes fall into. Themes work in a certain way. There's an archive page, a single post, a, a single page. And most themes work in that uh, similar fashion. The great thing about Hello is that it's a blank theme. You create the pages that you need. I think one of the frustrating things for me um, as someone that was building WordPress themes is that you're sort of stuck with what the theme builder gives to you. Like what if you didn't need um, your SEO page, I mean, your search results page to look a certain way, you wanted to do it in a different manner. You would have to build a custom uh, a custom template within that theme, but Elementor and Hello um, makes it really easy to, for you to spin up these things. And the great thing about Elementor is that you can build uh, a custom page and say, hey, I want this to point only to everything that's tagged with blue line or everything that's tagged with red line. So you can get really granular 
and get really crazy. But in this case, um, on our current site, it's a Django Python thing. And it's crazy because I mentioned that one of the art project managers was doing some code pen work to do her work. Like we don't want our editors to be focusing on web development features. Um, and there were like a million different layouts on this page. So with Hello, I still have the ability to generate or spin up some, some custom uh, layouts that they want, but um, I do have the flexibility there, but I'm also able to lock it down uh, in ACF. And those fields that are in that field group, um, the great thing about what I'm gonna show you today is that you don't have to use all 12 of those features. You could say, hey, on this theme, I wanna use one, three, and five. On this theme, I wanna use two, four, six. So you have that ability too. And again, it's as simple as a, a click, click, click. So, um, so on the back end, I used Hello, uh, the child theme of Hello uh, to build what I'm gonna show you today. Uh, in terms of plugins, um, the Zuki theme didn't have, uh, it had a, a, a quote feature, but it wasn't random. So the art, uh, the client said, hey, is there something that could show a random quote? So I went and found a plugin for that, tied it in. Uh, I, we use table press. Uh, we have, as a government agency, unfortunately, we still use a lot of tables. Uh, we're trying to uh, get them to uh, shift off of that um, as well. Uh, and then I think that's really only it. We use, uh, in terms of, we use S, uh, Yoast SEO, um, and that's for the breadcrumb as well as some of the uh, content uh, recommendation features in Yoast. Uh, what else did we use? Uh, we're using the events calendar for the, uh, uh, the events calendar. And what else of oh, note? We use Hotjar. Uh, for those uh, you are familiar with Google Analytics, what Hotjar does, it, it shows you uh, heat maps of the page on how people use it because we really wanna see what people are clicking on. Um, a lot of what we do when we're fighting back our departments is um, they'll say, we need this page on the homepage and no one looks at it. We need to show them not just with Google Analytics, we show them no one clicks on anything on this page that you think is important. So all those PDFs you wanna dump in there or these uh, useless images. Um, so we use that as a tool to sort of um, give them live reports on how their, their content is doing. And also they see, when they see it for themselves, it, it, it emphasizes a point um, for them to be a little more efficient in what they build. So um, so yeah, so we use a, a few of those backend features um, and we plug them in that way. All right, so um, let's, let's talk about um, ACF and um, Elementor. Um, I've, I've, I've added the plugins on the back end. Um, I've created a, a field group uh, and then we just wanna create some templates. So um, for those of you that aren't familiar, um, Elementor has a couple ways to build uh, themes. You can do it the traditional way. Uh, once you click on templates, you'll see uh, your templates here and you could just go up to the top and go add new. You can import templates from other places as well. I think it, it exports a JSON file and does it that way. Uh, and again, the traditional way, and again, Elementor has been evolving quite a bit. Over the last year, they introduced the theme builder, which is a more visual uh, representation of what you see here. But um, in Elementor, you could build all these individual pieces individually. Um, an archive page, again, is if you create a tag, for example, everything that's tagged with blue line will appear on a page with, um, you have the ability to put in an e uh, image, a thumbnail image, an excerpt, and it points over. So in our case, um, we have those talk pages that are sort of a table of contents for all the projects, for all the locations. So that's um, seamlessly gonna uh, tie into what Elementor can do. And themes can do this in general as well. But again, you may have to do some customization on the traditional theme side. Here, it's a little bit easier. Once you build the template, you can point it, you have, uh, you tell it where you want it to display and it gives you a drop down. and we'll take a look as we go. You can also build um, your search results page from scratch as well as, um, Era 404. And the great thing about Elementor also is that it works with certain themes. So a lot of folks like uh, early on in the Elementor days, you could tie it in with Astra, you could tie it in uh, with certain themes that it hooks in automatically. But um, if you want more freedom, if you want to really start with a blank slate, um, um, Hello is a, a great place to start. Hey, uh, uh, Sharon, while, while I'm about to jump in, what, what's your thought? Do you, do you use Hello or are you more of a traditional theme tied in with Elementor person? No, hello is my preferred theme. <laughs> okay, awesome. I, 
you know, because I'm usually mine are always customized. So um, hello is the best for that. Awesome. Awesome. Lion, what about you? What do you use? I also use Hello, Hello and Java. Awesome. Yeah. So again, for those folks that are new uh, to Elementor, and again, for your clients, you may not, and then the great thing is that your client may have specific types of pages that they want. Maybe they just need a really simple page uh, layout um, and a couple of iterations on that, and you don't have to build out everything else. So it's, it's great for that. So um, also, um, and like I said, over the past year, uh, the theme builder launched and like I said it's what we just looked at but it's a it's a more visual representation and so you can see the pages that I built it also gives you a thumbnail or a preview of how the page is going to look um, so again this one's nice um, and with pro um, you have control over all the different features you can build your headers um, you can build your footers you can have a number of different headers and like um, there's some folks that I've seen tutorials on where they have um, a header that works with dark images, a heart of the header that works with um, light images. So you can get really crazy, but to me, the ability to quickly bang out a theme. And if you're working with clients, if you build a starter theme that you can apply to all your different projects, you could just export that theme and, and it speeds up your process, increases your profit margin, you know, the less time that we have to spend on, spend on all this building. And if you can um, regenerate or reuse your theme parts, um, it, it's really helpful in that way too. All right, so um, let's go in and take a look at um, the, pro the page that I created for the projects. All right, so again, as you click in, it gives you a, a closer uh, view. And again, what you see um, here is you, can, you have conditions that you can have that apply to. Again, if you wanna point it to us all the posts, you could say every single post on the site will have this and then just go from there. So everything that you create in the content area, it'll, it'll be applied there. Or you can be very specific. Um, and once you create your fields in ACF, uh, they appear here as well. Also, you'll notice that there's uh, a couple of areas called venue, organizer, and event. Those are from the, uh, the, the event calendar. So those post types are pulled in too. So you can do some customization uh, with your Elementor uh, themes that you build and have it uh, apply there as well. So that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, so you have the ability to control where this uh, shows up. And to me, that's one of the uh, most powerful things about Elementor also. So let's go ahead and we're just gonna click in uh, to our um, template that we created. And, um, okay, it's giving me a theme here. So um, everything's a little squished here, but uh, I hope you can see. If you can't, let me know. Um, one cool thing also is that you notice it's previewing some content. Um, as you build your themes on the back end, uh, you can go in and say, hey, Elementor, I want to see a certain uh, post that's already in the system as the preview, and it'll pop it in over on the right as you work. So instead of seeing a blank screen or blank text boxes or blank image boxes, uh, you can plug in actual content as you build. So that's a really nice feature. Um, again, uh, if you look on the right, uh, when I click in, the header is in a gold at the top. That means it's a global element. Um, right now we're editing uh, a page, but you can also jump around and do that kind of editing, but we're not gonna focus on that today. And then as we move down the page, uh, this is a breadcrumb that's a global uh, element. Uh, that means, uh, it's going to appear all throughout the site in a certain fashion. One of the great things about Elementor, but it also can be um, like a Pandora's box. You can also unlink it and edit it specifically for the page you're working on. So that means it won't be collect connected to the global element. And if you click change your global element, it's not going to affect that. So you have so much power. But again, I try to keep things simple. And uh, the elements that I know are not going to change are going to stay global. And the other elements that I know are, won't be. Oops. Uh, so as we work down the page, uh, this element is the page title. And it's, um, so that means uh, it's going to pull the, the title field from uh, the post automatically. Um, and then you have a little bit of control over what shows here. Um, this is considered a dynamic field, but it's not an ACF field. So again, uh, Elementor is automatically connecting to the, uh, the, the back end of the CMS and uh, you have the ability 
Um, but let me take a step back to show you also. So once you create a page based on the type of page you create, if it's a single page, an archive page, a single post, you have a number of different options that are out of the box in Elementor. Um, you have your, these, these are all applicable to a single post. So you can drag on single uh, post title and that's what this is. You can drop in a post excerpt, you can drop in post content and it grabs a post content from the WYSIWYG in a standard, uh, a standard setup. And you work your way through, you have a featured image. So all the things that are in a basic traditional WordPress site, uh, you have those features that you can drag and drop in. Uh, as you move down this column, these are basic elements as well. If you need a text editor, and that's basically Elementor's version of a WYSIWYG editor, you can drop that in. You could drop a video if you want to put uh, YouTube. You can drop a, a button, a divider. So you have all the common features uh, that sometimes you have to use plugins for. It's part of uh, the package. Then as you move down the page, um, page of options, and I'm going to close these up so we can. Uh, so with Pro, you get a number of different features that are are elevated. You get um, login screens, uh, different types of galleries. Um, and for each element, as you drop it on the page, you get a series of options to really customize it. And I know for us, I mentioned material design at the beginning. Um, our project manager is big into material design. What that means for you is Android and the way an Android looks and functions is considered material design. It's based on Google's design principles. And so every user element um, is based on sort of a, a Bible of, uh, of branding uh, instructions. So it looks a certain way. Um, so with this, um, we wanted the ability to mimic the material design and create a library of elements that people can drag and drop and they would already be pre-formatted. So that was one nice thing about this too. And all the page builders do something similar, but you know, you have animated headlines, a navigation menu, call to action, testimonial carousel, blah, blah. It's just a lot of uh, features, you have a lot of animations, um, uh, Facebook page widgets. So all these things do specific um, things in a drag and drop format. Um, then as you work your way down, you have more general um, features. So again, you can see with Pro, you have probably 40 different features out of the box without any plugins. A lot of people also add on top of that. EA is a big uh, company that has a few uh, plug in. But to me, again, I try to keep them simple and within the program. And I try to customize these widgets um, to the visual look and feel that we need. So if a slider needs to look a certain way, um, I do have the ability to uh, tweak that kind of stuff. So again, that's one of the great things about uh, Elementor. And again, if I, I apologize, I'm sort of making sure I, I pick up people that are new to this or people that may have a little more um, experience as well. And then uh, depending on the plugins that you have built in, uh, like the events calendar, uh, it works with uh, Elementor, like I mentioned, and there's a couple of widgets that you can drop in and do some basic uh, customization there too. So again, that's a great thing. They're always looking to tie in um, other plugins into the system. And then the last set of uh, plugins, and again, depending on what you, if you buy a, a premium plugin for Elementor, it'll add it to this uh, feature list as well. But these are WordPress uh, drag and drop features that you can pull. And these are based on, I think, the Jetpack family of uh, tools. All right, so that's uh, uh, basically uh, how that tab works. Again, the global elements that were created, that I created for this project are here. So again, I just drag and drop those into, a, into the design. Um, you can also search for widgets. So if you wanted an accordion, for example, you could type that in and it gives you the examples of that where you can drag and drop. Um, Along the bottom, again, you have a navigator, which shows you what's on your page. Sometimes it's hard to, to select something. So, um, and again, this is sort of like the panels in Adobe Photoshop. Um, you can click through and see the different elements on your page. Um, and you can, and this makes it easier for you to do editing. And again, as you can see, as we click those things on the right, the information changes. So with every element, you can edit the content. You can edit the style of the widget. You can edit uh, the advanced feature. So um, if you want it to, um, you could tell it, hey, I don't want this element to show on a, on a mobile device. So for instance, if you had a, a big cruddy uh, slider, um, you can hide that on a mobile device because again, that slows down. Uh, a lot of people on a phone want to get to that information and get out of there. So we don't need to see sliders and carousels and whiz bang there. So you can just simply click a button and it hides that element. And so you can work through your page and say, this works on mobile, this works on desktop, this, 
And so you have, again, you have a lot of control uh, within this basic uh, panel. You can also do CSS here or in the customizer. Um, you can do some absolute positioning things that are really cool. Um, and again, these are specific to what element you drop on the page. Um, you also have the ability, uh, just like in Adobe products, it creates a history of what you've done. So if you say, for instance, like I do this notoriously, um, I had a shoulder surgery. So um, my mouse skills are kind of screwed up right now because I'm using the wrong hand. And sometimes I'll do a right click and delete something by mistake because, you know, you're using the mouse and the keyboard at the same time. You can go to the history. Um, you can look at your revisions and you could just step back until you get back to where you need to go. So again, it's all within this panel on the left. Like I said, one of the things I like about it as opposed to Divi is that to me, it's all in one place. It's not in a purple, orange or pink box and then all this kind of stuff or Beaver Builder. It's a little, all of them are different, but like I said, I like the fact that this is clean and in, in one place. Um, you also have the ability within, and again, I'm gonna get to the ACF part, I apologize. I'm just doing a really quick thing. I'll be on there in a sec. Um, you can also see it in the different, uh, you can design it for mobile on the fly on the tablet on the fly. So you make changes on the page when it's in this view and Elementor remembers it. So you don't have to do jump out of the page and go to a window to do mobile. Um, it's all in one place. And again, I haven't been in the other two tools in a while, but to me, that's a, another great feature. Um, you have the ability to preview and look at your settings from here. So yeah, so that's a quick uh, view of the window. I'm gonna jump over and walk you through some of the connections that I made. Unless there are any questions, uh, unmute and ask your question. If not, I'm going to jump over and start working my way down the page. I just had one quick question, Joe. Um, okay, Mark. When they're editing, you 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 know, I didn't even know about global widgets. That's so cool. So uh, I'm going to learn about those. Those are great. Uh, but when when they're editing, let's say one of these articles, like let's say this post here, and they're editing it, are they editing it using Elementor, or are they editing it using kind of default WordPress or Gutenberg or anything? Well, in, for in this post level, for this a uh, solution. And again, we talked about this this morning. It's all going to be done in ACF in one of those windows. So, for example, okay. So they're um, so they're so yeah. So when they add, they these, don't they don't have access to drop in a widget right, or anything like that. Right. Post. Right. So this okay. layout is uh, it it mimics what's in here. So for instance, I set up the, you know the 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 headline uh, as a, as a right. page title. I right. set up an image at the top for the gallery. Um, I set up three different sections for artist information, artist quote, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So it mimics this design, but it's tied into those ACF fields. So their so editors all, cannot right. like interject and add a slideshow. They, right. they have basically right. pre-filled. Okay, you're right. right, thank you. And then, like I said, I have it, I'm, I'm not developer level, but ACF Pro allows you to create conditionals. So if you want something to show on one page and if it's empty, not show, you have the ability to do that. I don't know how to do that yet, but that's eventually going to be folded in. So, so like I said, this is my uh, in learning process. And again, those experienced people on the line, if you have a, a better way of doing something, I would love to hear about it. Um, but yeah, so, so that's how it sort of works in this particular instance. And as the developer designer, you have control over how you want to do it. We're also on our main light boat they wanted to do it differently. They're working with a vendor. And it was funny because it was sort of a indirect competition. Like I was working on the art lifeboat and they're working on the main lifeboat. And the vendor had a whole different way of using Elementor and ACF. And uh, when the project manager from that sat in on my demo for this, he was like, why didn't we do it over there? So every person has a different way of doing it. So you might find a better way of doing it. But for me, for this one, I didn't want I saw the alarm bells went off when I saw that she was using code pen. And like I said, I didn't want her to be able to pop in a code snippet that she saw on the internet and blow up the site. So I took all of that control out of her hand. I all like right. it a lot. I, you, you, I think it's great. Okay, cool. All right. Um, so yeah, so as we work down the page, um, again, this is one of the standard headings, but again, you could tie it to dynamic content. Um, and if I created a field in ACF that was called title, I could tie it directly to that. But let me show you. Um, so for instance, this field here is on the right and I can't plus it up much bigger, but it's an ACF gallery field. So back in the, the field group that I showed you, I created it, uh, I drag and dropped an ACF field. Let me jump over and see if I can show you that really quick. Uh, yeah, so I created a field for the gallery. Let me just... Uh, show you that so we could do a side by side as we walk through. Uh, and again, 
and again, if you can't see it, I'm moving the screens around. Hopefully I didn't screw up anything. All right, so there's an image slideshow uh, feature that I created in ACF and everyone can see it, right? So it's a gallery feature and I think that's a pro feature. Um, and once you select the feature, it changes what uh, shows below. And then I wanted the preview size to be um, this theme. Um, Zuki theme has, um, and I'll jump over and show you. Um, this image is 842 pixels wide by a certain height. So I locked that in. Um, and again, I set those in the media. I knew what I, the thumbnails were gonna be. And again, I was just lifting the stuff from this theme to try to closely uh, mimic it. So I put in those sizes and you're able to select sizes or um, it'll be based on uh, whatever your theme that you choose is. Uh, so you get to ch choose that. Um, then you have another option. You have the option to upload it to the post or directly to the library or pick something from the library. Um, you have uh, the minimum number of selected items for the gallery. Like I said, you have a lot of control over exactly what they can do. And like I said, if you want to lock it down, when I when the uh, project manager looked at my demo, he was like, so you can actually tell them they can only put 500 characters in that box and his eyes lit up. So you have that much control, which could be sort of like you can be a tyrant or in my case, I was trying to make something that I know the users can quickly build pages on and not focus on. Like if you have the ability to surf the internet and get lost in a rabbit hole, you'll find yourself on Twitter or looking at a YouTube video based on cats for hours. So in this case, we wanted, I wanted to really limit that. So again, it's based on what your conditions are gonna be for your client or your artist or your customer. Um, and in this case, it was for artists. You have the ability to tell it what kind of images it can it will allow. So um, in this case, just JPEGs and PNGs. These are just artist images or images of the art, and they're really particular about how the art looks or is presented. Um, they don't want any writing on top of the images uh, because it's copyright issues and uh, a lot of things there. So um, I just represented what. Um, uh, specifications they have for us. You have conditional logic. Again, I'm not that great with ACF Pro, um, but that could say, hey, if this field is not completed, this field won't show that kind of stuff. Um, so that's there. So again, that's where um, this uh, happens. So again, once you drop your image, like once you drop your basic gallery in, and let's just do it for the sake of this. Let's uh, grab gallery. Uh, drop that on the page. Uh, then once you click in here, uh, you have, uh, there's a little canister, you know, when you're um, looking at um, info architecture or wireframes that a, a, a developer or a technical person writes, they have those canisters that represent a database. So uh, in Pro, you'll see this as an option. Uh, and also, I think you have it in, in the free version, but to connect with ACF, uh, you click here and then you can see um, the ACF fields that are tied to that particular widget. So this is a gallery widget. So you only see the ability to tie it to an image field or a gallery field. So you won't see it. So an image field can't connect to a text field. Uh, so, um, so depending on what you drag and drop, you get a different set of features. So I, hey, I wanna connect that to ACF and that's it. That's the connection in ACF. Um, then to be more specific, uh, you click here and you key it to the specific field that was created in the field group. So in the field group that I showed you before is a field group called image slideshow. So back in here, the, you key it to a field called image slideshow. And there it is. And that's it. That's all you have to do for ACF. Um, and again, this is a standard layout. And I went in and I, I gave it styles. I said, hey, I want it to show in a mosaic, blah, blah, blah. So, it, so that's why it looks different than the one on the bottom. But again, you have control over all those elements in, in Elementor, uh, which is kind of cool. So again, this is way simpler than doing the P PHP stuff. Um, and that's why um, uh, I was excited when I um, did a few tutorials and I was like, hey, this isn't going to be too bad because again I was just going to try to quickly uh, mimic the theme and see if I could do something simple but I gave them that extra layer of uh, dynamic control so as we walk down the page um, here's uh, I put in a text editor and again the text editor is tied to the project description again I selected the ACF field 
and then the key, I wanted to key it. And again, it's the text box. So see, it has different things that it could tie into. Um, these are the different fields that I created that were text fields in that ACF field group. You select that. Um, also, if you wanted to put, um, and this is, and I'll show you at the bottom. Never mind. Ignore that. I'll show you a, a perfect example for what I was going to show you there. Um, then you walk, you uh, move down through. This is a global element for a YouTube video. So that field that had uh, YouTube and ACF, they copy paste the URL and it pops in a video here. And so you can see, um, and again, it's not the same order as a field group. You're able to design any way you want. You can move things around. You could have different layouts. So again, this could be um, the project's template. And then if we wanted to do um, a, a location template, but have um, we don't have everything, but just a couple of the fields, you can do that. So you have a lot of control over, you know, once you've created your fields um, in Elementor, you can create specific templates and tie them into certain tags or tie them, into tie them into certain categories or posts or pages. So you have a lot of control. And so here at the bottom, what I wanted to show you that I didn't show you before was um, this is um, some meta information. Uh, let me see here. All right, so each, um, each of these areas uh, in this post info, and so what it's doing, it's going in and grabbing these three fields in ACF. So this is the display year. And you can see uh, for the display year, uh, it's just a date. Oh, hold on, let me go to this one. It's not that one, it's, okay. All right, so this one is for the artist. And on the page, you can see, it says artist colon Glenn Kano. That, um, custom field type is only grabbing Glenn's name. But the cool thing about ACF is that once I tied it to that um, field, um, I was able to pull in artist, but then also you could say um, before artist, I want artist colon and it popped that in and then I just styled it. So um, you have the ability to add something before or after in certain cases. Um, you also can make that a link. And I mentioned before, um, I'm going to have that link to a page of all artists. So you have a lot of control. And again, that mimics the standard WordPress way of displaying tags and categories. And again, you have a lot of control. You can pop in an icon. A lot of folks are into dropping icons in line with uh, what they're doing. So again, you have a lot of control. You, have, uh, you can display it differently. You can have it as an inline um, or you can have it in a list. Um, and again, I was trying to mimic what I saw over here in uh, Zuki. So again, it's just um, done that way. So again, the client doesn't know that this isn't Zuki per se, but again, all the features that I'm adding is an added benefit. Um, so yeah, so again, this is, I think this uh, share, these share things are global elements. Uh, this is a standard uh, post navigation feature, which is one of the standard Elementor uh, tabs. Um, over here on the right, uh, this is where it's pulling in from ACF. Um, I dropped in an image uh, again, and I'll show you how I did that. Uh, let's go in and say image, image. Uh, you can drop in an image by dragging and dropping it. Uh, then over here, uh, you can see it's got a dynamic tag feature. Uh, again, for image, it's giving us a list. You can say, hey, if uh, there's a featured image in this post, pull that. Or you can go down to ACF and say, hey, I'd like to use an ACF fill for that. You click on the, the wrench to see the key. And I want to key it to either you can tie it to the artist image or the map image. In this case, we want the artist image. And then it pops that in. And again, that's how easy it is for ACF. It's, and like I said, this, is, this was pretty cool. So again, like I said, it wasn't something I had done before this project. Um, I went through and looked at a couple of videos. and. I think the thing that was kept, uh, tripping me up was that I felt like this has got to be more complicated than this. <laughs> and so I was trying to do a lot more. And then I, was, and then I have to keep telling myself, simple, simple, simple. Um, and and th so that's where I am today on this project. Here is where I put the SoundCloud uh, embed. Again, I dropped in, um, you have a SoundCloud widget. Uh, let me type, show that, how you get that. Oops, if I could spell. Yeah, and you just drop that in. Uh, you take a look, you connect that with ACF. And then again, when you click, it shows you different options. 
uh, and which is weird because it does show the images and everything, but um, I chose the SoundCloud embed and I guess it's gonna grab a, a URL in this case um, and it pulls in that. Um, and so that's how I built the page. Um, and that's how it's done in, in, in Elementor. Uh, again, it's great because you can preview it. It gives you a live preview as you're building it. And so it's just not uh, blank areas on the page. Um, so with that, I'll, I'll uh, and let me show you, I'll go in the back. Let me jump off of here. It's gonna ask me if I wanna save it. All right, so, um, and again, I created a custom post type for the artwork section, uh, created a whole bunch of tags. Um, so again, and I, and I demoed this earlier. Um, let me, I'll look at one and I just put in there. All right, so, and again, so for this one, I created a, a slideshow. Um, and again, I'm gonna customize the slideshow. Right now, it's just showing it in a gallery format. Uh, for the artists that don't have an image, we've dropped in a generic image. Uh, and again, the cool thing about Elementor is that you have the options uh, to say, hey, I wanna show the caption, I wanna show the description. Um, and so for each image, if it's properly, and we always stress, um, we always stress um, being accessible. So I've told them, make sure you put an alt tag in, make sure you put a caption in. So for this image in particular, um, we put an artist photo not available as a caption. So anytime it's dropped in, it automatically populates that or they put the artist uh, name and that shows in the, as a caption there. Um, as you work down the page, you see it's got the project description, it's got the artist statement and I went in in the customizer and I said, hey, for the artist statement, if it's a block quote, style it this way. Um, so again, we're able to mimic what we saw over in Zuki. Um, and again, it does the display years and uh, it, it mimics uh, the Zuki theme here. All right, so that's sort of Elementor in a nutshell. And like I said, it, it's so easy. It's not like you have to do any development work or plug something into the theme. It's all seamless and integrated. The only requirements again is if you have pro of both ACF and Elementor, you can do that. And again, I'll have to follow up. I, I think you can, you can still connect to dynamic information uh, through ACF. Uh, so for instance, if you wanted to tie it to things that are in your standard uh, post fields, um, for instance, you, if you put it in the, a featured image, you can put a featured image field in and tie it to that. So you do have some dynamic features there, but if you want to take it to that next step or the next level, ACF is an easy way to do it. So I'm going to open up, uh, open, you can open up your mics and uh, tell me what you thought. Um, if you have any questions, uh, we, could, we could chat. Or um, if not, I'll, I'll get to the slides and we can sort of wrap it up here. So uh, what did you think for the folks that have ACF experience? Is this similar to the uh, process that you use? If not, why don't you chime in and tell us how you do it and, um, and share uh, what, what you got there. Well, I was gonna say, you know, I haven't, I haven't really uh, worked with ACF and Elementor as much, but I'm, I've worked with ACF for many years. And when I hand code sites, that's basically how I do it, the way you're doing it. And it works great. And I see the Elementor integration is outstanding in, in, in terms of using that. Yeah, it's uh, just click, click. And I think, yeah. you know, most people, and to me, the one thing that they suffer on is like a lot of people don't know to click that wrench and yeah. open up those different options. But like I said, I looked at a couple of tutorials or you see me do it. It's only two clicks and you've connected to ACI. Yeah, it was specifically this is what caused me to go to to Elementor, the, the, the tight integration. Once I saw it was well integrated because, I mean, I couldn't go without ACF. I, I use it all the time. Um, I have used things like pods um, mm -hmm. in the past. And I I was really early on with pods and it was a little confusing. Uh, and so uh, I switched over to ACF pretty early on. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's really smooth. And I think that your, in terms of when I work with my clients, your way of building it out is good because they got predefined fields. They can't mess it up. You know, it works really great. And so then, you know, I try to integrate everything much in the same way as you do. And I'm excited to build a site uh, with Elementor and ACF. I, I, it, I can see how well it'll work. Oh, awesome. Um, so you mentioned you use pods. What's the difference uh, for, and I know Sharon mentioned it too. What's the big difference between ACF and pods? Is it just, is it just the interface or? I think that Sharon will be better off talking about it because I, 
I, I have one site built in it and I kind of dropped it after that. I had such a devil of a time early on getting fields and circumstances and everything. And, uh, and it, uh, maybe Sharon, you can elaborate, but when I used pods, they had their own kind of display template part. So there's kind of like, you're not just setting up the fields. You're also controlling how they're displayed through pods. And I was doing it in code. And so that whole bit threw me off where you're controlling how they were displayed. Uh, I know they've evolved quite a bit since then. And, um, you know, so it may work, it may work much, much better than what I did, but I had a devil of a time and I was, and I love the developer. I've had seen pods many times in WordCamps and, and um, his name escapes me right now, but he's out, you know, he's brilliant and it's, it's a brilliant setup and everything they've done, but uh, I had difficulty with it early on. Oh, awesome. And I know for me, before you jump in, Sharon, I was just going to say for me, um, I feel like the pro level of ACF isn't really user friendly for a non-developer. So I'm, I am going to check out pods to see, because it does seem like it's more of a visual interface, which I think I'm more used to working in. Sharon, what, what's your take on it? So, um, and I just did some research while you were doing your intro stuff. And, uh, um, so there's three, I think, uh, flavors. There's ACF and there's pods and there's also something known as tool set. And out of the three, pods is completely free. Um, there is an, a pro version of pods, but that's that's for uh, the builders like Beaver Builder, Oxygen and stuff. So it's specific to that. So you don't have to pay for pods to do what your custom field set. Also with ACF, um, you do pay for the pro version. Um, and of course, pods includes everything. So basically pods can do everything ACF and ACF pro does. Okay. Also, um, ACF doesn't allow you to do custom post types, whereas that's where the CPT plugin comes in. If you okay. Because I used plugins. a CPT UI and, yeah. and ACF pro. Okay. So, so it's all pods, bundled in one. Yeah. So in pods, I can create my custom post types without having an additional plugin. Okay. So that's, that's, I think, where the difference is. Okay, and I know Lydia and uh, Lion mentioned that they, they've they used uh, ACF for quite a while. Uh, Lydia, what, what's your take on um, how you use it, uh, ACF, and if, if it's any different than my process? Yeah, um, yeah, my process is really, really very similar to that, Joe. Um, I think I have done, you know, almost almost identical type work where I have a custom post type and taxonomies and I'm pulling in the, the terms. Um, I hadn't done like galleries or I hadn't done some of the fields that you have done. So that was really cool to see how the, the galleries and like the SoundCloud and YouTube pulls through. I didn't really know you could do that part of it. Um, I think the one, one thing I've used it a lot for is like directory style things and I've used oh, facet nice. WP for for filtering and I was wondering what you used to filter like you have a really nice interface where you can select um, on the sidebar you can select like artists and how did you do that did you use facet or something something different well no actually it's and again that's where I'm gonna have to um, defer to you in terms of being more advanced for me I was just gonna filter it based on the tags so if oh, it's, yeah. yeah, so if it's um, the blue line, we're gonna create an archive page that's just gonna list the blue line stuff. So yeah, so like I said, I haven't gotten there yet. That's phase two of this project. Uh, and I, like I said, I hope I did it okay where I could sort of salvage it and I didn't do it wrong. But um, so yeah, so I, I definitely wanna know about the filtering thing. I did put in the, the chat for folks, uh, people were wondering about the pods link. I, I put the plugin link from uh, wordpress.org there. And then again, they have their own page. Uh, also, I know, uh, Lion, you were going to jump in and, and share, or is this similar to your process, or do you do it di differently when you use ACF? No, no, uh, very similar. Um, yeah, exactly what you and uh, had Lid Liddy had described is uh, is how I use it. I also use the um, the custom post type UI uh, in conjunction with the ACF. So I'm sort of interested to see how Pods works because I've I never agree. worked with it. Uh, so I might have to. Go tinker around with that as well. Um, I use a lot. I use a lot for um, for blogs. You know, customers have specific types of things where they have events and news and different categories that they use. 
So I'll just try to use ACF to make it really easy so that they only have limited areas that they have to uh, work with inside the account. So they're not really playing with too many things. Um, so that's typically how I'll use it. Awesome, awesome. I'll tell you also, um, Joe, in my circumstance, I also liked pods because I could either create a new, you know, custom post type taxonomy or, you know, an advanced custom type, or I could even expand an existing, like for instance, users. I had to actually add a lot of fields to the users for a particular client. And um, also, you know, I could extend anything like our product categories. So like I, I work a lot with e-commerce stuff. So I, I could actually drill down and create specific fields for anything that was in WordPress. So that's another feature that I really like about pods. And, and when did you say you were gonna pre present that at the Dallas meetup? <laughs> I think I'm going to have to schedule that. Um, oh, that's awesome. A lot of people have been looking for a lot of advanced stuff. So I'm, I'm redoing my schedule now. I did it for the whole year. Now I'm redoing it. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, but that's, like I said, to me, this is very useful to me too, because like I said, this is just my beginner stab at uh, yeah. at, at this. But I, I hope I'm, uh, I mean, I have areas where I need to learn, like what Lydia mentioned. I've been thinking, how can I do that? But I have no way. I, I have no experience or I didn't find a tutorial that was, like the crazy thing about what I showed you today is, you know, normally this is an enterprise level site, thousands of pages. A lot of times when you work on a project like that, you get a year, maybe, yeah. you know, six months to a year. We had three months. Oh. So, um, so I had to make quick decisions and say, does this work or not? And then yeah. move forward. So um, like you mentioned, Lydia, that's something that I was definitely thinking about, but I couldn't find a quick solution. So I think too, for users, um, the difference I think for us picking it up, I know for at least me, I, I had a coding background where I used to work with databases and fields and stuff. So it's easier for me to understand how that looks. Whereas in WordPress, we don't get that, uh, you know, when we're setting custom fields up, we don't get that relationship right. of building this into a database and how that's going to work with database relationships and stuff. Because all you, all you have is the WordPress screen. I think that's a big difference if you've worked with databases before and understand the hierarchy and how you want to correlate the information that's that's a big key to working with this yeah and to me like i mentioned the whole simplification process i sort of my mind sort of exploded a couple of times because um there's so many different relationships um an artist may have art at multiple stations yeah but there's a one-to-one -one relationship for every other artist. And then there's yeah. certain stations that have multiple art and then other stations that have only one. So I was like, how am I going to set this? Yeah, so yeah. yeah. That's where the relationship, and, and that's another thing. Uh, that's the other difference too between pods and the others is that um, ACF doesn't do well with um, combining relationships. Uh, I think pods had a better better thing um bi-directional i'm sorry bi-directional relationships it does Ooh. do relationship but bi-directional uh, pods can handle that oh awesome yeah so I, I definitely that's the next thing i need to learn because like the wp toots guy has a whole series on the pods as well um but um what about um for our newbies i know uh, larry and lynn i know you're new to this subject and it could make your eyes glaze over but um what did you think about the subject today you know, I'm like ready to just play around with this stuff and try and, you know, figure it out. I think that, you know, you, like I said earlier, when, when you do your presentations, you explain everything in a way that, you know, makes it easy to understand for a newbie and a novice. And, you know, I'm, I'm ready to play with this. That That's how I'm feeling about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah and that's what Ron oh, had ahead, said man. earlier about uh, playing with things. And for me, that's one of the best ways to learn is to have fun and play with it. And, and the good thing about these meetups is that if you play with it and then you find out that you've gone down a, a path that's not what you thought it was, it, it, it's easy to get help. Yeah. You know, uh, th there's a whole community people can turn to, newbies like me. So I, I really appreciate you guys. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I know. Um, 
there was a mega meetup for Miami, I think last week and uh, the, the, one of the three presentations, she did one on ACF and I just watching her, I learned a whole bunch. And like I said, hearing, hearing uh, Sharon and Lydia today or, or Lion, I was like, those are a couple of things I'm gonna have to jump in and try out for myself. Like I said, I wanted to do the relationship thing or the filtering thing and I wanted to do pods, but in three months I had to make, you know, my decision-making process was amplified. Um, what about what about you, Gary? What did you think? Um, not sure what to think yet. I'm still in the process of learning it and uh, been watching a lot of tutorials on um, YouTube. Um, just seems uh, very powerful and like a whole new world to me. Yeah, cool. Yeah, Michelle, what about you? Oh, oh go ahead, Sharon. I'm sorry. I was just going to say for the guys or people that want to tinker and play around. Think of things like like you like, you know, like the, I think you guys were talking about desserts. You know, that's a recipe. You know, think about um, like I love margaritas, so like I could actually go into listing different types of margaritas or recipes of margaritas. You know, so think about something that you can relate to and how you would lay that out. And I think that would help you play around really good. So the question is, rocks are on the rocks or not, or fruit yeah, or frozen, non frozen, yeah, <laughs> no salt. <laughs> okay, nice. Michelle, what about you? Michelle, I'm, I'm always eager to hear what you, uh, what you think of the meetup. This is, yeah, I love the meetup. This is brand new information for me. So I'm just gonna try to absorb it and use it in some way. But I have to be honest, I'm gonna try that pods thing too. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Okay, and then I had to make sure I, I reached out to Ron because again, we're trying to pull him over from the dark side. <laughs> yeah i'm i'm convinced that i have to spend some time with this too um it's uh it's awesome i mean the integration with acf is i haven't even heard whether divi offers that at all um and it, you know what what's an acf should be already in wordpress you know it should be part of wordpress um maybe it will be but yeah. um it's great to see how easy it is to work with Joe. Oh, cool. At least you make I, it easy. <laughs> thank you. Because I know uh, Beaver Builder, their um, Beaver <laughs> project product works with it. But again, like I said, I don't think it could be easier than what I saw today. So uh, yeah, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> cool. All right. And you know, I had to I, I had to rib you a little bit, but, but that's right. It's all, it's all good. I deserve it. I asked for it. <laughs> all right. All right, Shannon. As, as uh, you know, in your role, um, do you have to deal with database issues or something a little more advanced? I have, it's interesting. I have done database um, and with the, the agency and it's enterprise level and he's got a plugin he uses and it wasn't ECF. Um, and it was, there was a site that was multi-directional and it wasn't pods. I'll have to like ask him because I don't think I have access to the back end of that site that I worked on. Mm -hmm. But I um, want to try pods. Um, I've seen um, Alicia demo ACF time and time again for me um, with her Lucidity Festival site, which mm -hmm. is not a um, Elementor situation. Yeah she, yeah, she would have rolled over today or she would have had a fit today. Okay. Yeah, she's that, not a page. There's reason she didn't come. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah. I, I'm always open to learning something new and I'm kind of stoked. I'm trying to put together my artist site and I've got so much information and I'm trying to think, how am I going to put it together? And this may be how I organize it. Yeah. There's a tutorial on WP Toots on how to do a digital portfolio. Yeah, you should. I, I'm going to write that in my notes. Yeah, right and, now. and it's in my slide deck when I jump back over. I have some resources. Yeah, because you really, especially like if you're doing a, a client portfolio, if you wanted to show, you know, GM versus, you know, the market on the corner versus a restaurant, you could have uh, ACF and Elementor tied in where it shows certain ones on certain pages. Um, yeah, you have a lot of power. Um, and then I definitely wanted to reach out to Juan or Kim and get there. Um, I know Juan, you said you had experience. Um, did what we show you today fall in line to what you normally do, or do you work differently? All good here. Um, I, I haven't really launched a live site with it, so I'm still playing around with it. And those are great examples. 
So cool. So really appreciate it awesome. as I grow my, my tool set with it. Awesome. Juan? Yes, how this is, um, let's say my first time that I take a look at this okay. and I, it's uh, kind of advanced for me. So I was going to ask you if you have, because you see uh, the videos to do this, can you share some links or something from the very beginning uh, so I can watch them? So, how to build the, the website and not the website, I mean the, the post and then so I can add the advanced custom field and, and so on because I have uh, not any experience about this. Okay, definitely. Yeah, I'll put a, I'll try to, while we're still going around the room, um, I'll, I'll paste a, a link to the WP Toots uh, playlist and then it's going to be in my slide deck also, which I'll put on the events page. Thank and you. Chris, Chris, what'd you think? Okay, thanks. Well, it's all good stuff. Um, to me, it's a lot of the user interface and how easy it is or isn't. Um, there's the, the tough part for me is there's a, kind of a disconnect between how heavy, and I, I think Ron kind of mentioned it too in terms of he wished that some of this was built into core which would be useful, especially the advanced custom fields portion. Um, but I also know that typically when I'm looking at something like this, if it's super heavy database driven work, usually I'm gonna pull Drupal out of my tool belt and use that instead because it's a little better at the heavy database stuff but it's also the amount of knowledge you need to use it and work with it to do that is commensurately higher. Um, but I think there are a lot of cases where you're doing smaller projects that aren't, you're not gonna have a 12,000 page site, you know, maybe you need 20 pages that are gonna use that database stuff. And in that case then, you know, these solutions become a whole lot easier to use. So it's, for me, it's a, a where does it fit on the spectrum so they can pull the right tool out of the toolkit to solve that problem. Yeah. And for me, and like I said, um, I come from a tradition of like the desktop publishing thing where that's what put, you know, traditional printing out of business is because you can do it really simply digitally. And um, I know a lot of people always uh, make a valiant effort to try to learn uh, code, learn to code or learn to develop, but it's just too difficult for me. And so I, I just, I think, and I think for me, my path forward in WordPress, I think I want to build themes that reflect that, or I want to build learning products that do that. So, um, so I haven't committed to learning development because I feel like the learning curve or the user experience is more important um, to, to creating people that adopt that technology. So, so that's just where I, where I, where well, I, it's, a, it's, and even at that, even it, as you keep hacking away at it over time, eventually you'll add the small bits and pieces that, you know, Hey, I understand what this thing is doing in a theme here. And then, you know, a light bulb will go on to you and open up the doors of a bunch of the rest of the stuff in themes and how theming is done. Although, even that's changed heavily with Gutenberg lately. Yeah. You know, there's all, there's all this great stuff I know from 10 years ago about writing themes and how that's changed over the years. But it almost feels like with Gutenberg, you, you got us, what you knew before doesn't help you. And there's a whole new mountain to climb. Yep. And that's going to, that's going to happen this summer with full site editing. So, but if you, you know, hack away at it and occasionally look under the, covers to see what the code looks like eventually you catch on and then suddenly you have a whole new tool in your tool belt to you know to break things let's be honest you know yep. nine times out of ten i break things 15 times yeah. um before you figure it out um but that's what test sites are for um and i've got a lot of those yeah. um but uh no, it's, and, you know, I like that you point out the fact, too, that you got to be careful of people poking under the covers uh, for themselves when they know absolutely nothing. Um, you know, at least I know 
only do one thing at a time and then test to see if it works. And if it didn't, then go back and fix that thing. Yeah. You can't do 10 things at once and then, because you'll never remember the 10 things you changed to be able to roll it all back. Yeah, I know um, for the our main lifeboat or our, our Titanic portion of the lifeboat project, um, when he saw that this demo, he, he said, oh, it would be cool if we can allow them to drag and drop and, and build that way. And um, so there were two versions or two directions they were considering where one was more locked in. And for a, about three days, he was into the move things around. And then he came to a census and said, we really want to <laughs> lock that down. So, so yeah, so knowing that you can um, really control it and it's not really in a, in a, in a mean fashion, it's just, it's just practical. Why don't you want to write optimal copy for the web? You shouldn't allow them to write 1500 page dissertations. So um, it's just good user uh, experience in my opinion. So, um, so yeah, so I'm gonna pop back up the slide. So if anyone else wants to chime in on the discussion as we wrap up here, go ahead and jump in. Um, all, right. all right, if not, I'm gonna pop up the slides one last time so we can finish up here. And thanks again for everyone for showing up. Um, Thank you, Joe, this was great. Oh, no problem. Yeah, like I said, to me, um, it, 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 it's uh, nerve wracking for me because like I said, I'm, I'm learning this for the first time too, but I figured I need, and for the, I, I didn't put it up um, earlier because I was like, am I gonna be ready to show something? But it forced me to, to get my thoughts together. So it's good in that sense. So, um, so here are some learning resources um, in Linda, which is free for at most libraries, uh, both here, the, libra the major libraries here in, in Los Angeles, the county and public libraries, if you have a, a library card, uh, it's free. Um, part of their um, merger agreement, uh, LinkedIn and Linda, um, I guess they offered this service free to all libraries, uh, our participating libraries across the country. I know some libraries don't agree with LinkedIn privacy policy or politics, so uh, they don't recommend it, but most libraries offer it uh, free. Uh, there's a great ACF uh, tutorial by Joe uh, Casabona. Um, he's, a, I, I, he's a friend of mine. Uh, he's great. He has his own channel as well. But like I said, I, the WP Toots guy is probably the best for ACF and Elementor, in my opinion. Um, there's also, he did a, a, a topic on um, advanced custom uh, ACF. So uh, this one's a good one too. And cu custom post types. Um, and again, this one, uh, walks you through how to do it with a traditional theme. And I think he uses 2020 uh, as his sample. So that's a good one if you are a uh, developer uh, heavy in your approach. Uh, there's a couple of uh, overviews of advanced custom fields like tutorials, like Kinsta writes a lot of uh, great blog posts on everything in WordPress, but um, there's a great one on ACF. Uh, and again, I'll make these slides available. Um, on the events page where you signed up for this event, as well as I'll send out uh, a message to uh, all the people in this, uh, on this meetup, um, all of our members as well. And then this video will be on our YouTube channel. Um, this is the W2's playlist that I just pasted in the chat. Again, he does a great job, Paul C. Uh, he has, I think it's 10 ACF videos, uh, starting with the beginner's guide all the way through to like he does a, a dealership style site or um, he does two different types of sites that um, will show you how to organize uh, your, uh, your content in a certain fashion. So he's great also. And like I said, I love his manner. He's really uh, uh, a great teacher. As always, Elementor has some great uh, YouTube resources. Adam Pricer and Daryl Wilson are both local uh, Southern California guys that have uh, in-depth channels. Uh, again, these links are going to be in the in the slide deck. Um, these are the the different playlists that are on the Elementor YouTube channel that I mentioned, like the Master Class, uh, the Speed Art, uh, popular up, uploads, uh, new features. And again, I also I, I love to do the Master Class and the uh, new feature tutorials or the widget tutorials. Uh, they break it down. But uh, one thing, uh, some of the I would say those videos are five to seven minutes long. So the WP toots are like 15 to 18 minutes and they're, they go a little more in depth. 